All right, I'm putting the sprockets on this uh, cover and these uh, crankcase cover bolts. I torqued them to 18 pounds right here. These. Yeah, these are torqued to 18 pounds and also this one in the middle here is torqued to 18 pounds. Now these, this is overkill. Putting these on. These are a fine thread quarter inch. And this here is also longer than the one they give you, see? See, that's the one he gives you and wants you to use, but I use a longer one because then it goes in farther and holds better. And it's stainless steel because all it does is hold the cover in. And this isn't stainless steel. It's going to rust. So that's what they give you, and that's the way I... And I use these stainless steel, and you can see there's Loctite on that and on that. So I'm going to put it all together, and I also smear this all up with... the. Uh, white grease see and inside there before I slide that one I fill the whole key up with the white grease you know so these here I mark them with a scribe right here and then I cut them off with my cutoff saw so they're perfectly and you get the full length of the 13 16th keys so now we're going to put that together also the shims I didn't use any of the shims but you can see I painted them with this high silicone coating so if you're having problems with your uh, exhaust wrap looking all goofy that's what you're supposed to spray it with this stuff here makes the, the uh, exhaust wrapping all nice and waterproof and cool and then I'm gonna have to wrap this too because you're gonna burn your leg you know but that's how you get that effect so the rain and stuff won't make your pipe rust out and it's also painted underneath but you see for some reason the paint comes off this cadmium coating yep so now we're going to put it all together and like I said these are overkill because this bolt right here holds everything in so I'm just putting two of these in which are also fine thread I think I said and I didn't use any of the shims so we got her nice and tight right there see this is supposed to be like a shim maybe here or a shim there but now nah, we got it lined up perfect like this with no shims so she'll come off of this this is the primary sprocket and this will be the drive sprocket so if we need to this is what came with it a 15 tooth see and this is a 13 tooth so by using the 15 uh, tooth it'll go faster if we want to change it so these pretty well slide right off and on this way with the grease you'll never you won't get any see you can see you won't get any rust inside there for quite some time and then they'll slide off so the mechanic or somebody buys it to go that's really nice it comes right off you know it's not all rusted froze fast so you see that does hang out a little bit see that that's what's nice about these cheap calipers see you can actually get a nice regular reading off it instead of all those digital numbers there's a thing at the bottom of this thing. It gives you a perfect reading, see? That's how much it hangs out right there. Can you read that? It's uh, 3 sixteenths out, or 9 millimeter hangs out. So yeah, so you can, like, Put some of this grease in there, see, and then it won't rust on you. But don't get any in the threads, or the Loctite won't work. Yeah. See that? Now you know what I mean. Why not? Yeah. So that's all packed in there. Now you can stick this bolt in here with the Loctite on it. And that's tightened to 18 foot pounds. Yep. But to speed it up, it's half an inch too. We'll use this trusty uh, Harbor Freight impact wrench, your yeah, impact driver. And now we use this here, which we set at 18 pounds there. So there it is, it's on there. And how we did that, we stick a big screwdriver back here. We weaseled it in back here, see? 
back in there and jammed up the flywheel a little bit because 18 pounds ain't much and then we were able to give it this wrench here is about 14 15 pounds anyway all right so we got that 15 it's loctited in there these are all loctited everything's gone it's sitting down here all we got to do is maybe tighten this up which is like a fifth nut or just take it out all together she's ready to run now yep and we hook this up with the drip loop see which we could probably tie to the frame later on and that will stop all that oil going into the uh, fuel pump and yeah this is a uh, Walbro fuel pump one of the best you know in the racing division like quarter mile and that stuff but I really am not I don't really understand how one of these really works to be honest with you <laughs> I can't wait to see it work so yeah, there's the wrap. She's on there. The gears are on there. She's ready to go, except it's freaking pouring down rain and there's like thunderstorms and it's supposed to be uh, tornadoes out there again today. And oh yeah, I wanted to say I replaced these with stainless steel nuts and lock washers. Brass would be the best if you can get brass metric nuts. Yeah, 8 millimeter. You'd be better off. But the stainless steel's good too. So all we got to do is like screw the spark plug down we're good to go all right this is the back view of the you know the engine so you get a nice straight edge here along along this uh, 20 tooth which makes it real easy and you can see when you hold that nice and flat against there it's perfect see it just scratches it it's perfect not too tight it's, it's not making no resistance you want some resistance you hear it and that's about all the resistance you want and obviously this has to be flat or it was machined on a metal lathe so it's flat and so no matter how much that's why I'm spinning it just to show you that it doesn't really matter I like things perfect okay there you go hope that helps you get your uh, harbor freight but like I said it's best to get that yellow motor for a few bucks more because the parts are more available I already put that racing head on here so that's better and you see I put all socket caps on there stainless steel too and this is the racing carburetor with the uh, you can set the uh, idle there idle screw also you can set it right here too see a, you know close off so maybe that's what's wrong with your uh, engine maybe you need one of these racing carbs okay and this is the sprocket that came with it so we're ready to go yeah how do you like my workbench so if you want to send me pictures of your workbench i'd be glad to see it now this is a workbench approximately let's see see from the bottom to the top we have approximately four inches of white oak see that solid white oak and then here, it's uh, also about three and a half inches wide of white oak. See, they're all white oak planks. See, so look, we could hit this. We could hit this with a hammer, and you're not going to get any. Like you could hit this with a hammer. See, and you could put a glass, a bottle of glass. A glass of water over here and the water is not even going to shake that's what you want in a workbench here how solid that is yeah so that's the difference between me and you so if you like the way I th do things subscribe to my channel and I'll show you how to do stuff the right way